It's a new day. For new adventures. So we left this morning and started driving. Let's see if you can see it back there, but we're at Cumberland Gap. <laughs> That's the gap. <laughs> That's the gap. So we finally made it. It was like four hours. And we're gonna eat lunch here in town and then keep going to Mammoth Cave is the goal for the end of today. Yay! So we're here at the Daniel Boone Visitor Center on the Tennessee side of the Cumberland Gap. And this is like the actual trail that the set settlers and everything walked down. So you can see all the wagon trails and feet prints. And then there's horseshoe prints and deer and all of the different livestock that they had with them. Daniel Boom. And there's Daniel Boom himself. And there's more on the other side, but that is the trail that walks up there. There's some bison. What do you think? That's cool. So we're going to hike the gap after lunch. Cool. All right. We're going through the tunnel to go into Kentucky through the Cumberland Gap. Yay, Kentucky. There's the state line. So we're currently hiking the Cumberland Gap Trail up to the saddle marker. Trying to beat the rainstorm behind us, but it's a half a mile. We're already in the saddle or the middle of the gap, but there's a marker up here. And then just past that's the tri-state marker where Virginia, Kentucky, and Tennessee all converge. And we'll see if we make it that far. Hi! It's starting to rain, but we made it to the Cumberland Gap marker. Um, we're going to see about hiking up to the Tri-State Peak. It's 0.3 each way, but it's starting to rain. We're already wet. So, <laughs> we're going to hurry up there take a picture. So here's the Daniel Boone Trail marker. Marking the middle of the Cumberland Gap where they crossed. So we got camp set up last night. We currently have some Hawaii coffee. The white chocolate macadamia nut going. Caroline's lavender Earl Grey tea steeping. About to frost some milk. So we can have some coffee and tea. And then start breakfast. We can give a full walk through later. It stormed all last night. Uh, lots of lightning. I am journaling yesterday, but I've been bird watching too. And we saw a bald eagle fly over. I've seen a northern flicker um, and a red headed woodpecker and lots of other little birds. But it's been a beautiful morning so far. It's a little chilly, which I'm excited about because it's fall. Yay! So, about to start cooking. Caroline will probably give a full tour later. Back house is over there. Pretty much kind of have the place to ourselves. But after our hike yesterday, so we never made it to the tri-state marker. 
but we got soaking wet. So we attempted to dry everything out yesterday, but of course, with the storm last night, it's all wet again. But the tent did great, stayed dry all night long. I slept like a baby. It was so good because the rain was like hitting the tent and it was, it was good. So I'm going to start cooking breakfast and show y'all what we're fixing up this morning. So tea's finished. Got the half this pack of bacon going. We're going to save. We're going to cook it all this morning, but the other half we're actually going to use on sandwiches and do like turkey bacon club kind of sandwiches. So we have eggs and toast and bacon for breakfast this morning. I didn't pick toast, but we got toast, bacon, and eggs, hot tea, cold coffee, iced coffee. It's a new day. For new adventures. So we made it to Mammoth Cave. We had lunch in the parking lot. We're about to go on the Violet City Lantern Tour. So I'll have some pictures and some videos. I want to hold it in front of you because it's going to cast a shadow. So if there's a bump in the trail, you might not see that if you're holding it in front of you. Uh, the higher you hold it, the bigger that shadow gets. So, you know, you might have to play around with it until you're comfortable. This is the one method. We like to call this the left-hand method, right? It's the right-handed method. I'm sure you guys can figure that out. But that's really all you need to do. We don't want to swing it around, right? There's no railroads, no trains to signal down there in the distance in the cave, in the darkness in the distance. So you might just bump it in your neighbor. They'll be real upset at you if you do that. So don't swing it around. Don't hold it up to your face. Yeah. Today, carving out new cave passage. But most of the cave is now high and dry, uh, protected by that cap rock, the sandstone and shale, except where we have a leak, like, like what we see before us. So this is actually the edge of the ridge leading down into a sinkhole valley. But sometimes it's just a small sinkhole or a crack or crevice uh, that lets water seep vertically into the cave. So this was a notable water feature, it appears, on that early saltpeter map, but they were grossly overestimating the distances. So we're about halfway through our three mile tour here, which would be about one and a half miles, but they had this water feature listed as four miles from the mouth of the cave. Wow. Yeah, the end where we're gonna be later on at our three mile point, uh, I think they said that was nine miles into the cave, yeah. It took them a lot longer to get anywhere. It probably felt like nine miles to get there. just got done uh, with our cave tour. We did the Violet City Lantern Tour. So all the lights were off in the cave and we, well, I held a light, a lantern, a pro kerosene? Kerosene. Kerosene lantern. Um, and we like walked three miles through the caves and it was amazing. There was so many cool things and like all the history was super cool and um, a shout out to our interpreter, Kelly, because she was amazing. So we just drove one of the dirt roads from Green River Ferry, which is actually closed this time that we're here. The water level's too low. But we're on the way back to camp, but we're going to do the Turnhole Bend Nature Trail. So it's uh, kind of like the Horseshoe Bend out in Arizona, I believe kind of similar to that. The Green River makes a sharp bend. Looks like a horseshoe. So they call it the turn hole. But show the... So it's half a mile. We're gonna do that trail and come back. The park's been pretty empty. Uh, 
our tour was at one o'clock and one to four and after that it kind of cleared out but the leaves are starting to change colors it's starting to feel like fall up here in Kentucky might be hard to capture with this lens but along this trail there's a sinkhole you see down in there and the cliff but a tree's fallen to get to the sign but it's talking about life in a funnel and all the different plants going down into a sinkhole down in there is the sinkhole so we made it back to camp after hiking that last trail Got dinner going here. The sun just started to set out in the background. We'll have neighbors on that side starting tonight. And then that side somebody comes in tomorrow. Our power box, the outlet's broken, so we're actually running extension cord from up there, but we told the volunteer he's supposed to have maintenance come check on it. But we're having barbecue chicken sandwiches. And then boiling water to do southern home style craft mac and cheese. We got buns if we want buns but we're gonna do a easy meal tonight. Caroline just finished offloading all the pictures from the day and is going through, seeing what kind of wonderful shots we captured. All our stuff finally dried after yesterday's adventure of getting wet hiking. There's a bat flying around. We saw a few of them. There he is. There were a bunch yesterday, whenever we got here last night. Didn't see any bats at the cave, but we're still in the same area. It's a new day. For new adventures. So we're back in Mammoth Cave. We drove down a uh, dirt road. I think it's called like Hoochins Ferry, but it's one of the three roads that cross the water. Or there used to be a ferry. There's no longer a ferry. Um, we believe, if you can see there in the woods, there's two of these metal like post we think those might have been what pulled the ferry across the river so we're gonna walk down to the river the last part of the road was paved but it's been a pretty good just gravel road down here and then it ends the green river ferry Certain times of the years the ferry still crosses the river and then Denison and uh, I think this is called Hoochin is how you pronounce it But there's no longer a ferry here, but there is water access for canoes and everything Here's the Green River You can't actually get down to the water from this side, but you can see That's the other side of the park over there The road comes down to it one point there would have been a ferry here and all these woods would have been cleared out but you can paddle this river we're not going to do this section of the green river 
but there's a few kind of rapidy areas along the river. The water level is down, is what we were told. But we're going to do the upper end of the river tomorrow morning. There's an old creek bed down there. So we're on the Ugly Creek Trail through Mammoth Cave. But there's an old creek bed that this kind of follows down in this steep ravine. Let's see if it'll show up on the screen. You can kind of get an idea that we're way down in, going down into this ravine and then up the other side. We're down in the bottom of the Ugly Creek. You can see where the rivers converge and then we keep going up the other side but I think during heavy storms this has water in it. They kind of changed. One of the rangers was telling us that they changed some of the levees around here and a lot of the water moved around and shifted its flow. Caroline's looking at rocks. But it doesn't look like water's flowed through here in a while. There's a lot of leaves built up. So we're back at the main entrance of the park. Finally made it to the entrance sign. Got our picture. Just ate at uh, Amish Bakery. Now we're going to do the Sand Cave Trail. It's 0.1 miles. I'm going to walk down here to the Sand Cave. And we're making our way back to the Visitor Center where we were yesterday. So made it to Sand Cave, up at the top overlook for it. It was a 0.1 mile hike with a boardwalk. So we made it back into the park and we came over here to the Old Mammoth Cave Railroad cars. We got all of our souvenirs purchased. There's two deer right over there. Caroline bought a postcard and mailed that. What do you think of the train cars? It's really cool trying to read about it because all the people used to come here and that was like the early tourism stuff but I remembered that yesterday our park ranger talked about how um, like they would come and they were like really fancy and then they would like climb over rocks and stuff in the cave and that they had like those lanterns but they were like smoking everywhere and getting soot all over their fancy clothes but it was like a rich person thing to do. So, cool. It shows kind of the old path of the railroad where it looks like it took visitors from Glasgow up here into Mammoth Cave. And they have two of the cars on display. A new day. For new adventures. So we just put in on the Green River and it's like seven and a half miles from Denison Ferry down to the Green River Ferry. Yeah. So we're gonna do that this morning. We saw an osprey, he's up above here now. 
um, right when we got in, and the water's pretty chilly. It's like um, 65 degrees. Yeah, it's pretty pretty chilly, but um, ready to see what other animals and things that we see. Uh, but yeah, it's been good so far. <laughs> There's a little bit of a current. So it's not like rapidy, but we are moving by just not paddling. Should we talk? So along the river this little they call it a cave but it doesn't go far back there but when the water's higher you can actually paddle up in there I'm sure right here it's off the cool. side of the water what do you think so far it's really pretty I don't think I've ever kayaked so far. <laughs> I don't think I've ever kayaked where the walls are so big on each side. It's really cool. It's shallow right here. Might be able to see. It's pretty shallow. I wouldn't really call them rapidy areas, but there's a few of this you can see up there. Right in front of Caroline where it gets so shallow that the water picks up. But most of the time we're just floating, not even paddling. I'm still moving pretty quick. Yeah, that's good. You're gonna stay in that water and you're gonna end up all the way over by that hilly bank. Let it take you all the way over there. Just like that. Hard on the left. There's some turkeys in front of us. Right about there. Get a picture.
Do you? So we made it back. It took about three hours. We're now at the Green River Ferry Landing, waiting on Caveland Kayak and Canoe Tours to come pick us up. They'll be here in about 30 minutes. So we ate lunch, and now we're just gonna relax. They got a big parking area. It's one of the trails, and then the canoe launch. So you can either put in here and go to Houchins, or you can come from Denison like we did down here to Green River. Okay, we wanted to do a tour of our hall setup before we actually take it down. But the boats were there. We just got back from paddling the Green River. We got our cooler of ice and all the... And our moms. And our moms. We picked up moms and some pumpkins and gourds while we were here. But the propane worked good for the stove. In the annex, we basically used it for storage for our suitcase and the propane fire pit and the Dutch oven and everything. We had the blue mat down. And typically had our job rocker, rocking chairs out here. Move the picnic table over there. We have some string lights set up. Pretty much access the annex from this side. Just put clothes in it, hung our towels off the back. Then with the truck, with it parked here, we're able to cook and get light from the tent. There's lights on the truck. Water's there on the side. And then this was our main cooking drawer. So the two jet boils, there's videos of us cooking, but the two jet boils sit on this wooden thing. I would use two by fours to kind of brace and level this. Sink was there, it connects to the water. And then all of our extra stuff, spices and everything are in the front of this drawer. There's all our spices and our fresh eggs. And then back there's just extra camping gear. And then there's two food crates that we have out right now, but we're starting to pack up leave in the morning but the fridges work great it's stayed plugged in it's currently 41 inside the fridge all our stuff's in there haven't used the milwaukee fan been using the other fan but it's starting to take everything down a new day for new adventures so we're back at Cumberland Gap. We left Mammoth Cave and we're back at the Cumberland Gap Trail that we did on the way up. This is where we were whenever it started pouring down rain. Those other clips, today it's sunny. So hopefully we'll get to make it to the Tri-State Marker. But it's about a mile up to the marker and then about a mile back. I'm gonna walk up there and then go to Pinnacle Overlook and then find some lunch. But Yay! We had some breakfast at a little cafe this morning leaving the campground. It was called PJ's Cafe. We got biscuits and gravy and a cinnamon roll and it was really really good. So we've just been riding in the car. Uh, it's 
slowly make our way back home today. We made it to the top of the tri-state marker. So right now we are, well, I'm in Tennessee and Brian's in Virginia. Um, <laughs> but we made it up here. It was a pretty steep walk, but it was nice. It's not too hot outside. Um, but behind us is Kentucky out there. You can't see it because it's really bright. Um, let's see if we can fix it. Okay, so behind us is Kentucky. Uh, that way, and it has like little information about the state, like their bird and flower and when they were founded. And then right here is Virginia. Um, down that way. And then over here is Tennessee. So here's the geographical marker. So right now I guess we're on all three, but I like to stand in multiple at once. Um, yeah, so we're in three states at once. <laughs> 